characteristics of the P-39 airplanes do not differ greatly from those of most modern pursuit airplanes. The principal difference being that the spin is more oscillatory than the average student pilot is accustomed to. As a result, the first spin a new pilot does in a P-39 is apt to be somewhat startling. In all cases of deliberate spin tests, even in excess of five turns, recovery has invariably been accomplished in less than one turn with the proper recovery technique. This is true whether the spin is to the right or left, providing the throttle is closed. In any airplane, the use of power in a left spin will cause the nose to rise. Once in a flat spin, few airplanes will ever recover. Our first spin is a deliberate one to the left, approached from level flight with the power off. As the airplane stalls, the pilot pulls the stick back and kicks the rudder. The plane falls off to the left. After one turn, the nose comes up and falters before entering the second turn. After two and a half turns, the pilot recovers. Right and left spins are practically identical in appearance. Notice that after each turn, the airplane falters momentarily. The nose rises slightly, and then the plane whips into another turn of a spin. The pilot recovers after two and a half turns. Even though a left spin is entered with high power on, it need not terminate in a flat spin if power is removed as soon as the spin starts. Note here the propeller slows down as the engine is throttled. Then a normal recovery is made. If power were left on, this would probably have been a flat spin. The inverted spin of a P-39 is somewhat more violent but otherwise similar to its normal spin. Although the inverted spin is faster than the normal spin, it can be terminated at will by placing the controls in position to cause a normal spin and then recovering in the conventional manner. The nearest approach to tumbling was caused by pushing the stick forward sharply near stalling speed, following a vertical climb. With the stick held forward, the plane begins an inverted spin and falls in an erratic fashion slow, then fast, and always swaying in an oscillatory manner to the left. There is a normal recovery. Repeated attempts at this same type of maneuver produced almost the same effect. This was an attempt to create a tumble by pulling back on the stick in a steep climb as in the beginning of a loop. As the plane slows down, it begins to roll and almost does an Immelman, which the pilot is unable to stop and does a portion of a turn of an inverted spin and makes a recovery. In many attempts, no maneuver could be achieved which was at all out of the ordinary. With the nose vertical, the airplane rolls once or twice and falls into a normal dive without a spin. As the stick is pushed forward, the airplane does a portion of an inverted snap roll in a vertical direction. An easy recovery is made from a stable type of spin. As the stick is pushed forward, the airplane rolls to the left and does three quarters of a turn of an inverted snap roll, following which it falls over on its left wing. It then falls into an inverted spin for three turns. Then a normal spin and a normal recovery is made. As the stick is pushed forward, the airplane rolls on its left wing. The nose comes up and it does almost one full turn of an inverted snap roll. The nose then drops and the plane begins an oscillatory left inverted spin from which a normal recovery is made. The airplane climbs at a steep angle, and as the stick is pushed forward, the plane rolls to the left and does two complete inverted snap rolls. A left spin follows before the recovery.
If the pilot would neutralize his controls as the nose goes below the horizon, the plane would go into a normal dive. With the stick held forward, however, the plane stalls due to the inverted load and rolls to the left in a spinning attitude. Although the pilot should make a normal recovery from a left spin, he pushes the stick forward too vigorously and ends up spinning inverted. This is a result of over-controlling and recovering from the spin. The tumble test consisted of well over 1,000 turns or spins, including both normal and inverted types. This test proves that the P-39 does exhibit normal spin characteristics and is capable of prompt recovery if the proper technique is used. The rapid spins and snap rolls could be misinterpreted at first glance as an end-over-end -end tumbling motion. However, in no case did the airplane do one complete tumble. The test also shows that the so-called tumbling of a P-39 is really a maneuver which combines inverted snap rolls, inverted spins, normal spins, and the usual result of too vigorous application of forward stick pressure retained for too long a time in recovering from high stalls. In the final spin, the new pilot failed to pull the ship out, and as a result, the plane pancaked into the ground on a nearby farm. The pilot bailed out at 1,000 feet and was uninjured. <laughs>